All right, guys, what's up? Oh, yeah, it is, damn, Tuesday evening here in Sydney. I just have to do part three of this James Krause fiasco. I've done parts one and two on this live platform. If you want to check those out, just on my page, look at the first two. The Reddit James Krause post and then the initial one about the UFC banning him from Miles Johns' corner. But before I go on, I want to say thank you, all the new subscribers, everybody tuning into the, the channel um, and who've commented and shared my last video about Ali, Shavers, and Holmes. I say thank you. But to stick to the, the topic, man, this James Krause scenario with the UFC banning him and then also them coming out publicly saying that fighters, camps, gyms, and anyone affiliated with the UFC are no longer allowed to gamble on the fights. And I've sat with this for a while to see how I think about it, but I'm kind of torn between two worlds, specifically on the fact of the hypocrisy of the statement. When you look at the UFC has gambling shows, you could tune in. If Like down here in Australia, we have an app called UFC Fight Pass. I thought Fight Pass was a global thing. It might be called something different. I know you guys have to watch if you're coming from America, if there's a UFC event, you watch them on ESPN. I think they do the ESPN prelims. They used to do the Fight Pass prelims. Down here in Australia, the way it works is if you want to watch all of the UFC main all of the UFC's non-pay-per-views, you buy the UFC uh, Fight Pass app, which is like 10 bucks a month. With that, you get all of the shows, all of the fights ever that have ever happened. Um, they have the WEC fights on there. They have the Pride FC fights on there, the companies that they bought, Monopoly. And then also all of the like the shows, sort of. In, in those shows, oh, and before that, if you that's 10 bucks. But if when they have main events like the big UFC 283, you, you pay an extra 60 bucks. But anyway. On that Fight Pass app that, that I am a subscriber to, you know, I'm a, I'm a combat junkie. You guys know this. They have gambling shows. They have, I think it's called On the Mark. Don't quote me on this because I, I don't watch the gambling shows. I just watch the events. It's called something. But they, they have a show dedicated to um, gambling and the odds. They fucking have Yanni the Greek on their on their payroll. Do your do your research. Yanni the Greek is a Las Vegas kind of goon. The dude is like a Las Vegas sports book junkie. No, I'm not hating on Yanni the Greek. I used to live in Vegas. I'm just using him as an example that you have him part of your company, a dude who's like a notorious degenerate, and then you come out with this statement that anybody affiliated, fighters, coaches, gyms, managers, are no longer allowed to, to gamble on the fights. And here I come to my point with James Cross. Has he ghosted us? A week ago when I started these YouTube live streams about Krause, you know, I was never a fan of his fighting style. I don't like a I don't like a uh you know a lay and pray grind you out striker or, or fighter. His fighting style wasn't my favorite. I don't like his coaching style. There's something about Krause that just has never sat right with me, but I can't dislike somebody that I've never met. It's not in my nature. It's not that I dislike James. I've never met him. You know, I hear a lot of good things about him. But when this story came out, I initially sided with sort of the anti Kraus media. If you go on Twitter, if you go on Reddit, a lot of people hate on him. A lot of people talk trash. That's probably just because he's successful. He's a public figure, good looking, talented, and all that good stuff. Now, and I initially kind of, when he got banned from, you know, cornering Miles Johns, I was like, oh, obviously that's something, you know, my intuition always told me there was something off about him. And I'm not the only one who says that. Go to reddit.com right now. You'll, you'll see all these threads about Krause. But as the week went on and the next week went on and I see Sean O'Malley on the Rogan podcast and he starts talking about how he's not allowed to gamble on the fights. He's talking about the money he put on. And I started doing some due diligence, seeing the 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 numbers on the Kraus. I guess Kraus has a gambling show called the One Percent. Had a lot of 
traction. It was doing really well there. And then I'm kind of torn on the suspension only because, like I aforementioned, they have a they have a gambling show on the U on their app. They're affiliated. They have I don't know if it's on the octagon anymore. I don't I don't want you to quote me on that. But at one time they were playing gambling ads in between the fights. I forget what the down here in Australia, they would have gambling ads, you know, dial so and so to, to bet on the fights. And so you're taking ad revenue from a gambling company, but you're making laws and rules about fighters, gyms, managers, promoters not being able to bet on the fights. I get it, the integrity of the fight game. And, you know, I'll get to the point. I'm kind of rambling here. Firstly, on the title, has James Krause ghosted us? He has. I'm pulling up my data, and Krause hasn't posted on Instagram since, you know what? Let me talk about Twitter first, because Twitter is the older one. So Krause is a very, he was a very active guy in social media. It's how he was growing his platform. His Twitter only had about 30,000 followers. His Instagram had a lot of followers. When you look at his last post on Twitter, it was October 29th. It was the uh, ugly, ugly man Joe fight, you know, his guy versus uh, Jun Young Park, South Korean, the turtle. That was his last tweet, October 29th. That was a month ago. His last Instagram post was from his podcast on November 13th, two weeks after that. Hasn't posted since. Now, I mean, he's known about it. He, he He's had to know that – the UFC and, and it, it was the gaming commission, and this is where people slip. It's not the UFC. I mean Dana White. I mean, granted, he doesn't. Act, Dana doesn't have the power that he had five years ago before he sold the company. Dana doesn't have to be working, by the way. He he sold out. Like he doesn't. The the the, the first initial investors after the Fertitta brothers and him um, bought the UFC. In my opinion, the greatest business, the greatest entrepreneurial steal. In business history, in the early to mid two thousands, they bought a dying, flailing company for I think four million, and then they sell it 10, 15 years later. The most recent, I think, it was twenty fifteen, for four or five billion. And this is why you don't see Joe Silva anymore. Joe Silva was the matchmaker. Uh, Rogan would introduce him. Joe Silva, matchmaker extraordinaire. He tapped out. He didn't need to be part of it anymore. Dana doesn't need to be part of it anymore. He he has that money. He chooses to be part of it because he, he loves the rush. Uh, a client of mine says, you know, when we fight, he loves the juice, that energy. Dana's a degenerate gambler. So I digress. When I see the cross, cross hasn't posted on Twitter for a month, Instagram for three, two, three weeks. He's He knew it was coming. The UFC has a gambling show affiliated with them on their app. Makes the announcement that fighters – Promoters, gyms, managers aren't allowed to gamble to for the integrity of the sport. This makes me think, and, and this this is controversial. Dana White doesn't have the control that we think he does. It's the Nevada Gaming Commission. It's it was the the people in Vegas. Now, if you're in this state, if, if you're anywhere, actually, I'm in I'm in Australia. I'm trying to put ten bucks. I'm a big gambler. I'm trying to put ten bucks on the World Cup. The odds on my betting app, those odds come from Vegas. Now, my betting app, you guys in America don't have. It's called Sportsbet. Every time I visit the States, I fly into L.A., my Sportsbet app does not work because it's an international thing. But the odds are the same. Those odds, if I'm in Sydney, L.A., if I fly to um, the UAE, if I fly to the U.K., I'm using different apps. But the odds on the World Cup games – Come from Vegas internationally. That's where the odds are made. The sports books. That's who's coming down on the UFC, and that's who's coming down on Cross. Now, was he fixing fights? Was he purposefully withholding information to the UFC to capitalize on the insider knowledge that he's had? You know, assuming his fighters were the fighters that he was you know, I don't want to say fixing fights at what but you know you look at that last fight it looks like that was the case that Derek Minner fight is tough to argue in a, in a court of law of saying hey man like if you put if you put cross in a court of law in the United States and they make you take a uh, put your hand on the Bible it's crazy 
it's crazy that they fucking make you put your hand on the Bible. Is that a still a thing? They they bring God, they bring an invisible God into a court, and they make you take a swear and oath. I wonder what Cross would say if they they put him in that scenario and said, going into this fight, did you know Minner was hurt? And did you tell your podcast on Discord, <laughs> which that's where he did, to bet against him? Even so, if he did that, yeah, I don't know. How would you? I don't know how I'd deal with it. I don't know where he's been. He's disappeared. He's ghosted us. Go on Reddit. There's so many other things. Th this case is so complex because it also involves Glory MMA. It involves... Um, you know, people, accusations, accusing Cross of uh, many other things. I, I won't get into it here. If somebody else tweets about it, I'll get into it. I don't want to be the first to cover on a consistent sort of scale the other things, the infidelities. There, I said it. Go to Reddit. That's all you have to do. But I'm just covering the gambling thing right now. Let me know what you think in the comments. Where's James Cross? Tell him. I mean, it's crazy that. He, he's just disappeared as well. And I'm not piling on. Like, I'm a gambler. Like, I, you know, I'm not a gamble. I'm not a degenerate. I had I have an Instagram live gambling show called Easy Money. So I'm not, I'm not coming from a self-righteous perspective. I mean, Cross is a good coach. He has a lot of fighters. I want to know his side of it. Let me know what you think. Where has Cross gone? Do you think the punishment has been warranted? I mean, he's been getting buried in the media. The UFC has been moot. They didn't let him corner Miles Johns. Where does he go from here? What's up with Glory MMA? They haven't posted in a while. Let me know your thoughts. And guys, thank you for tuning in. One last thing. This time last year, I had 300 YouTube subscribers. I'm at over 5,000 now. All thanks to you.